guys welcome back to my channel if you're new welcome I am so happy you found us I'm Lisa and this is creativity and inspiration how's everybody doing I hope you're having an amazing day today we're talking about how we can transform puzzle pieces for our journals our planners for jewelry for our home and for much more so let's just get started and y'all come in closer before we do though I want to say Again, welcome to all the new subscribers. I'm so excited you're here. I am really working hard to grow my channel, so it means a lot. Um, just so you'll know me a little bit, I'm Lisa. I am a mom. I am a creator. I'm an artist. I have paintings in galleries across the U.S. at different times. I have a website. You can check that out down below. I love to do mixed media. I love to do any type of art that I feel like is going to tell the story I want to tell, that's what I do. I also love doing this channel. This is kind of where I'm trying to um, get to where I can earn a little money with this channel. It's very important to me. I have a rare disease. I have complex regional pain syndrome and I have a brain tumor. It is monitored from year to year. I am also a caregiver to my husband. He has had several strokes and has a lot of issues. Anyway, come on in and let's get started. Okay guys, I'm trying to give you a better angle when I film these, so I'm trying to do it kind of like over my shoulder. Maybe that'll work better. It's not sponsored by any brands you see, so just ignore the brands. But what I did was I went to a thrift store and got some puzzles. I actually got this puzzle and then when I got it home I realized how small this puzzle was this puzzle is very teeny tiny and I wanted bigger puzzle pieces for you guys I mean can you see the difference that's crazy right you can't even see this one hardly there you go Anyway, but I'm going to show you things you can do with both sizes because it may be what you have. And, of course, we like variety. I also have a lot of other things on my desk as well. So the name of this video is Altering Puzzle Pieces, which we're going to do. But I'm also going to show you different uses for this so that you don't have to do just one thing with them. And I'm going to give you multiple ways to alter them, but I'm also, like I said, going to give you different uses for them. Because if you just use them one way, that's kind of boring. Or it is to me, anyway. So, what are we going to do first? Let's talk about these little guys first. Believe it or not, you may think there's not a lot of things you can do with these little guys. But there is a lot, and I'm going to give you a bunch of ideas right now. So let me grab a journal real quick. So this is a journal I have. I like it. I use it to keep my art stuff in. I have one just like it and it's almost full. So I'm going to switch to this one very soon. So how can you use these tiny little puzzle pieces? Well, for one, they would make a great border. And you can mix up the sizes, the shapes... Whatever you have, you can use. Now, if it's missing a lot of pieces or whatever, it doesn't matter, you know, because you're not going to put it together. Okay, so you can make a border with these puzzle pieces. And how cute is that? I mean, that is just adorable. So with tiny puzzle pieces like this, you can make borders. You can also put them together, whether they fit exactly or not, they don't have to, and make little collages on your paper. We just got through doing a bunch of collaging mixed media, and these would be good for that as well. And what you can do is kind of, they don't have to match perfectly, but get them to kind of go together, right? And then... These don't go together, but I'm making them go because I want them to kind of be a shape. And what you can do is put together a shape. These aren't very thick. So you could put together a shape on your paper and just make something interesting for your page. Now, what you could also do is get a piece of cardstock. Okay. 
Okay, once you get your piece of cardstock, you can put your puzzle pieces on that. And you can lay them out to where they're going to make a picture, they're not going to make a picture. It doesn't really matter. You can make them however you want. You can lay them out like that, side by side, mix in colors, different shapes. You could paint the um, card behind it so it's maybe all black if you wanted to. You could leave it white. Whatever is going to tell the story in the journal you're using, right? And once you get them in whatever pattern or shape you want, cut off the excess cardstock. And this could be a tuck spot at the top of a page. It could be a tuck spot on the side. You could lay them out and make a belly band. So you can use them on cardstock or another paper and create tuck spots, belly bands, pockets. You could lay them out and glue them down, of course, and make journaling cards, whatever you want. And again, you've used them as page borders. You've used them to decorate and make your own shapes, and that way you can make whatever you dream of then. You can also use them like just like this and make them tabs on your pages for different sections. They would make really good tabs. You could put them sideways at the top, hanging over. You could do them long ways like that, hanging over if you wanted to. These little guys have a lot of uses because they're so small, and they don't have a lot of bulk to them. You could make them charms. You just poke a hole in the center of these and string them through, and you could make charms with some beads. That would be fun as well. So the little guys can be anything you want them to be. I like them because they are very versatile because of their size. And of course, I will show you a couple of those suggestions now. In fact, let's go back to the blank page I had, this page right here. And I'm going to attach the puzzle pieces down the side and make a border. Let me use my phone to hold that side down. Let me get some glue real quick. You can do half a page like that. You can do a whole page, whatever you want. I'm gonna do the rest of this page really quickly. Okay, so there is my page border with the little puzzle pieces. I think it's so cute. Let me show you something else you can do. I'm going to get a puzzle piece, this piece right here. I'm going to put it in the center of this page. I've got a new dabber, sponge dabber on my little sponge dabber thing. I've got some ink. Get some ink on here. There we go. It's kind of a yellowy tea color. I'm going to hold my little puzzle piece and kind of just... And you could also use puzzle pieces as stencils for the center of your pages on journal cards or whatever you want. How cute is that? You could put a couple together and use those as stencils as well. And there I used two together. So you can make stencils, you can make borders. They're so cute, guys. I hope they're coming across as cute over the camera as they are in person. Okay. You can also use them as tabs. And it doesn't matter where you use them, what kind of page you use them on, but they will make great tabs. Now, I'm going to use this one. It's got some height to it, so I can put it on the edge of my paper, but I'm still going to be able to see it over the edge of my paper. Okay, And I'm just using Elmer's glue for all that are new here. I like to just use Elmer's glue. It works, it dries rather quickly, and it's very inexpensive. Okay, so there's my tab. So I will show you this again at the very end of the video. Now for another option, like I said with these little guys, is you can poke holes in them and make them charms. You can either string them with beads or by themselves do multiple ones of these in a row. And what you do is when you have, let me get a piece of paper, when you have this shape right here, when you have, let's see, 
Okay, when you have this shape right here, you would poke your hole in this fat part down there. And when you have these bigger ones, you would poke your hole in the fat part at the top. See, it's one of these, it's one of these guys. You'd poke your hole down here. And all it is is getting something sharp. And this is what's called an owl, A-W-L. And I use this when I need to poke holes. So I'm going to get this one back. It's just real plain. And I'm going to poke a hole in the center of the two arms. And then I would get my needle and thread and just thread it through the hole there. And I have a charm. So these make great charms as well because they're so small. Now, I told you you could have multiple uses for these. These would make great charms on a charm bracelet as well. You can make earrings if you want. You can make ear... Let's see if I can get the light here. You can make earrings. You can make charms on a charm bracelet. You can make necklaces with these. You could put multiple ones around a chain. You can make anything that you can imagine with these tiny puzzle pieces. So don't lock yourself in to just gluing them on cards as decoration. Okay? Now, let's go to the bigger. Also, but if you do want to glue them on cards for decoration, what better card to glue some on than a bingo card? How adorable is that going to look when you have bingo with puzzle pieces? You can have them all over the place. You can have your bingo whatever you want, but then you get a really cool bingo card. So that is another option for these. Now, let's head over to our bigger puzzle pieces. Now these guys, again, are way bigger than our small ones, as you can see there, way bigger. Oops. So what can we do with these? Well, these are so fun. You can build these together and make a cover for your journal. Measure whatever, you know, your cover is going to be on the front and put that much of the puzzle together. Mod Podge it together. They have Mod Podge for puzzles if you want to do the whole thing and frame it as art because you can do that too. But you could Mod Podge a certain part of it and put that as your cover. You could Mod Podge it all together and put some felt behind it and use that as a journal page. There are so many uses for these. You could string these together and make a curtain for your window. You could make a screen for a door for a closet. There are so many things you can do with puzzle pieces. You're only limited by your imagination. But for our journals, they can be tuck spots. They can go on journaling cards. They can be little journaling spots. I mean, you can write on the back of these, no problem. You can decoupage a napkin on the back. You can add brads to them. You can bling them out. You can make them vintage with vintage, you know, paper dolls and other vintage designs. You can use buttons. You can use any thing you want to to create a theme for whatever journal you're making so let's do let's do a vintage one okay i got my music paper and a book page and i'll probably just do half and half on here because this is our base paper so let me glue these down real quick and I'm literally going to do half and half. And then just let it dry for a second. Then I'm going to come in with my scissors and my craft knife and cut it away. This will just take a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, 
After you trim the base papers away, you can fold any excess over like I did here. It just gives you a smooth, clean puzzle piece. Now, when you get to this point, you're going to want to decorate it with whatever theme you're going for. And like I said, I was thinking maybe vintage on this one. So, I have a few vintage pieces here. I have this vintage ticket that I'm going to tear in half and use part of it. And then I have this vintage lady that's way too big. But it's kind of getting washed out. So let's use a red ticket instead. I'm gonna use a whole red, I'm gonna use a whole red ticket instead because all that plain vintage was getting just way too washed out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put her there, but her feet are obviously hanging off. So I'm gonna cut her skirt, her feet off. Don't be afraid to cut these. So many people are like afraid that they have to use these paper dolls the way they are and you don't. Not in the least bit. You bought them, you can create your own shape with them. So now this is what I have and I might add just a little bling just to make it pop a little bit more with that red. Maybe like she's got a choker on. Or maybe not. Let's glue her down and we'll see how it looks from there. Okay, so here is our puzzle piece all glued down. I think it's super cute. And it screams something different. Something that we don't normally have. Now what would you do with it? Well, let's get our little journal back. And we'll turn to a different page here. And she could be a tuck spot at the top of the journal. So cute. Or she could be a tuck spot, little pocket at the bottom. And I think I like her at the bottom. And again, these puzzle pieces aren't super heavy. They're not super thick, so it works. But this time, instead of using glue, I'm going to use tape just so you can see the finished effect sooner. There you go. There's your pocket out of a puzzle piece. It's so cute. On this one, I'm going to decoupage a napkin down real quick. And I've got this one. It's kind of it's kind of a mixture of summer and fall colors. We're going to use this. So let me pull it apart. And what I'm going to do is just decoupage my napkin on really quick. I'm going to use regular glue. Of course, you would use Mod Podge, but I can do it faster with this. And I think it, it doesn't have that shiny finish that my Mod Podge has because I have gloss Mod Podge and I don't like it. Okay, and then I'm going to... I want to get some wrinkles in it just a little bit because I think that adds interest. So I'm just kind of patting it all down. And then I'm gonna put some on the top too. And I'm gonna use my finger to kind of gently spread it out. And then I'm just going to pop it out real quick. Okay. And then again, fold over any corners that are showing that you don't want to show to make it cleaner, crisper. I like it when it, whatever I'm decoupaging kind of tears. I like that. That looks really good. Now I could put a picture in the center of this and you can use it as a picture frame on a page. So if you're doing say a vacation journal or maybe maybe something big's happened in your life like you're getting married or you got married or it's a birthday, anniversary, whatever, you could put special pictures 
in a bunch of these puzzle pieces and kind of switch out between the side that is the puzzle and the other side which you can use as a frame. Now this side is not slick like this side so you could also paint it and do some of our watercolors painting that we talked about doing on these and then use some bling. You could use big puzzle pieces as decor on other things. Say you have a coffee filter, which I thought I pulled one. You can use puzzle pieces as decorations on other items, like this coffee filter. I could layer the puzzle piece that I just decoupaged on. I could layer this doily and then put a photo in the center of that. So puzzle pieces can be their own standalone things like journaling cards, tuck spots, pockets. You could put a few together and make belly bands. They can be the smaller ones, like I said, page borders, tabs on a page, or they can be decor like this. And then you could put your photo in the center of that. Just another way to use them. Now remember, I talked about adding texture on our mixed media piece. You can also do that on your puzzle piece just with markers and a stencil. And you would get some music notes. You could do this with paint. Or you could do rub-ons and add uh, some interest with rub-ons just on the back of just on the back of a puzzle piece. And you could do a whole bunch of these all over. And there you go. And then you could put a to from, make a gift tag, make it a tag. You could use it as an invitation. You could create invitations out of these. You can do so many things with puzzle pieces that you are only limited by your imagination. Now, what if you're looking and you're going, okay, that's all super cute, but the only puzzle pieces I have belong to the family and I can't cut them up. What do I do? Well, take a puzzle piece, whichever one you have, whichever size, and trace them on the back of an old postcard. Then you get two cool things. You get a back you can write on because the back will be the postcard, and you get a cool front because... The front will be the picture of your postcard. Let me show you real quick. Oops. Okay, I'm going to put this one down there. Get my pencil, and I want to get some interest on the back, so I'm getting some of the words. You can also scan puzzle pieces into your computer and print them that way if you want to. Totally up to you. There's a lot of ways to get copies of puzzle pieces by tracing them, by scanning them. If you scan them, then you only have to do it one time and you could print over and over. But you can print on postcards, so that's up to you. You can make your own puzzle. Like I said, you could decoupage an image on a puzzle and then put use that as your cover. You could use the actual puzzle itself as your cover. Whatever you can think of. This is a great use for old postcards, by the way. If you don't find you use them in your journals or your planners very often, then making puzzle pieces out of them is a great way to use them up. I personally like to use old uh, postcards as tip-ins on my planners for those days that I have so much going on. I can have extra space to write things I need to do that day. So there we go. There is our puzzle piece out of an old postcard. And I got some of the writing on the back just to give it interest when you flip it over. These would also make cute Thank you for your purchase if you sell your journals. Let's finish this one up real quick. And I don't really have a butterfly in the yellow one. We're going to add the butterfly to this and be done.
I will glue all this down and that will be our finished coffee filter. I'll do it like that. Pretty cute if I do say so myself. Guys, besides using them as decor like on coffee filters, you could use puzzle pieces on bags. These little ones, not only would they make great borders on your journal pages, but up and down or around on a sack. You could put somebody's initial with puzzle pieces if you wanted to. Whatever you can imagine. You could also use them on tags and playing cards as well. Don't forget to check out the end of the video where I'll have all the finished projects for you. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about puzzle pieces, how you can use them in your home, your journals, your planners, wherever you want to. Again, they would make great screens, great curtains, great detail on a wall just for some interest. Going into the journals, they make great journaling cards, tags, tuck spots, pockets, whatever you can imagine. You can also use the little ones as jewelry, earrings, charm bracelets, or as page borders, tabs, or charms on a journal. Thanks for being here today, guys. Let me know, have you used puzzle pieces before and how have you used them in your journals or your space? Let me know down below. Always looking for more great ideas. And remember, you're only limited by what you can imagine. Thanks for being here today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Take care. Oh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Remember, we're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.